a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Swedish General Election, 2018 General elections were held in Sweden on Sunday 9 September 2018 to elect the 349 members of the Riksdag. They in turn will elect the Prime Minister of Sweden. Regional and municipal elections were also held on the same day. The incumbent Red-Green coalition won 144 seats, which was one seat more than the Alliance coalition but, just as in the previous general election, short of a majority. The Social Democrats' vote share fell to 28.3%, its lowest level of support since 1911, although the main opposition moderates lost even more support. The far-right Sweden Democrats made gains, though less than anticipated. The election resulted in a hung parliament, with the centre-left and centre-right coalitions each holding about 40% of the seats, and the Sweden Democrats holding the remainder. The election turnout of 87.18% was the highest in 33 years and 1.38 percentage points higher than the 2014 election. On 25 September 2018, Lofven lost the vote of no confidence against him and his cabinet. As a result, a new prime minister and government will have to be elected. The Lofven cabinet will stay in power as a caretaker government until the Riksdag has decided on a new government. 2014 Budget Crisis Just two months after having formed a minority government, Prime Minister Stefan Lofven announced on the afternoon of 3 December 2014 that he intended to make the formal arrangements for calling an extraordinary election on 29 December 2014 the earliest date permitted by the Constitution. The election seemed to be necessary after Lofven's Social Democrat-led government lost a vote on the budget by 182 to 153, owing to the Sweden Democrats voting with the opposition, leading to a cabinet crisis. It would have been the first early election since 1958. However, an agreement between the Social Democrats, Greens, Moderates, Centrists, Liberals and Christian Democrats was signed on 26 December 2014 outlining a series of conditions in order to ensure political stability until at least 2022. The agreement included two main provisions. After negotiations between the government and the Alliance for Sweden concluded, the snap election was called off on 27 December 2014. On 9 October 2015, following the Christian Democrats' departure from the agreement, the December 2014 agreement was dissolved. However, the moderates, centrists, and liberals allowed the Social Democrats' minority government to continue to govern. Campaign Issues In May 2018, the issues that the Swedish voters considered most important were immigration, healthcare and integration. In the days leading up to the election, the most important issue was the environment, followed by immigration and healthcare. With the polls showing that the Sweden Democrats could be kingmakers there was speculation over possible government coalitions. Concerns about foreign influence in the election have been raised by the Swedish Security Service and others, leading to various countermeasures. The summer of 2018 saw several violent incidents occur, including the arson of over 100 cars on 15 August, which may have caused 10% of Swedes to state that law and order is the key issue in the upcoming election. While Sweden has faced sporadic gang violence in recent years at the end of summer break for students, violence in Gothenburg, Falkenberg and Trollhattan was said to be on a larger scale. Prime Minister Lofven referred to the August violence as if it was organized, almost like a military operation. In the following days, Twitter accounts connected to Russia tweeted about the fires. According to the Alliance for Securing Democracy intended to influence English language readers, Non-Swedish media frequently emphasize the events in order to tell a story of a society in decay, along with some negative, but restricted reporting around immigration, to describe great gains by the Sweden Democrats. This has been criticized as a false narrative and misreporting by domestic media. Major parties The Social Democratic Party is the largest political party in the Swedish Riksdag with 113 of the 349 seats. 
It is the major component of the incumbent Lofin cabinet, in which it works with the Green Party. Its current leader Stefan Lofven has been Prime Minister of Sweden since 3 October 2014, and has said he will seek a mandate to continue his Lofven cabinet. The moderate party is the second largest party in the Riksdag with 84 seats. It was the largest governing party under Prime Minister Fredrik Reinfeldt from 2006 to 2014. The party is involved alongside three other parties in the alliance. All four will seek to return to power together. Reinfeldt resigned as party leader after eight years as Prime Minister, and was succeeded as leader by Anna Kinberg Bartra on 10 January 2015. Kinberg Bartra's decision as de facto leader to enter the budgetary procedure agreement with the left of center cabinet saw sharp disgruntlement from some party districts. The alliance has more MPs than the government parties, but still finds itself in opposition. Owing to her low opinion polling numbers, Kinberg Bartra faced internal pressure from multiple party districts and the moderate youth league to resign. She announced her resignation in a morning press conference on 25 August 2017. Former Prime Minister and moderate party leader Karl Bildt was suggested as a replacement after Kinberg Bartra resigned. However, despite some party districts supporting his candidacy, he declined the offer. Ultimately, Ulf Christensen was elected to succeed Kinberg Bartra as party leader during an extra moderate party conference on 1 October 2017. The Sweden Democrats is the third largest party in the Riksdag with 49 seats. In the 2014 general election the party increased its number of seats by 29, becoming the third largest party. Its leader is Jim Jorkissen, who is the longest serving party leader. The other Riksdag parties have repeatedly stated that they will not cooperate with the Sweden Democrats in a future government. An extra general election was called after the Sweden Democrats gave its support to the oppositional alliance budget. After the proposed extra election was cancelled, the party advertised itself as the only opposition party and in the following months it saw a sharp rise in support. The Green Party is the fourth largest party in the Riksdag with 25 seats. The Green Party is the minor component of the Lofven cabinet, alongside the Social Democrats. It is the only Swedish party to have two spokespersons, currently Gustav Friedelin who serves as Minister for Education, and Isabella Lovin who serves as Minister for International Development Cooperation. This will be the first time in Swedish history that the Green Party has had its governmental record tested at an election. The Centre Party is the fifth largest party in the Riksdag with 22 seats. It was a part of the Reinfeldt cabinet from 2006 to 2014, and is involved in the alliance. The Centre Party has been led by Annie Loof since 2011. It was subject to public attempts by Lofven to become a cooperation party, but the party traditionally leans towards the moderate policy positions and stayed within the alliance after the 2014 election. The Left Party is the sixth largest party in the Riksdag with 21 seats. Its current leader is Jonas Huerschett. He has said that the party seeks to participate in a future Red-Green coalition government. The left party did not support the Lofven cabinet, because it was not asked to participate in that cabinet following the 2014 general election, but supported its budget that was voted down on 3 December 2014. Following the budgetary agreement, the left party is what tips the left of centre minority into a larger minority than the alliance. The Liberals is the seventh largest party in the Riksdag with 19 seats. It was a part of the Reinfeldt cabinet from 2006 to 2014, and is involved in the alliance. The Liberals have been led by Jan Bjorklund since 2007. His leadership is being increasingly criticized within the party. Opinion polls in the year after the 2014 election suggested that the party was struggling to recapture its previous level of support. Having been in charge of the school system and integration of migrants, it came under a lot of criticism owing to falling school results and increased segregation in the immigrant-dominated suburbs. The Christian Democrats has been led by Ebba Bush Thor since 2015. It is involved in the alliance. Despite polling below the 4% electoral threshold for most of the time between the elections, the party saw a boost in support in the time period immediately prior to the election guaranteeing its presence in the Riksdag. The party held on by a few tens of thousands of votes last time.
Minor parties Parties with less than 4% of the vote do not get any seat in the Riksdag. Feminist initiative led by former left party leader Gudrun Scheimann, is the country's ninth largest party, and is represented in the European Parliament following the 2014 European election. The party received 0.4% of the vote in the election, compared to 3% in the previous election 2014. The Pirate Party won representation in the 2009-14 European Parliament, but its subsequent runs for office have been less successful. It has been mentioned in some polls as the 10th largest party, but appears to be far from having a chance to break the threshold at a domestic level. The alternative for Sweden is a party with currently no representation in the Riksdag. It was formed from members expelled from the Sweden Democrats in 2015, and is led by Gustav Kasselstrand. The party received 0.3% of the vote, and thus failed to enter the Riksdag in this election. Electoral system The Swedish Riksdag is made up of 349 MPs, and all are elected through open-list proportional representation on multi-member party lists that are either regional or national. Each of the 29 constituencies has a set number of parliamentarians that is divided through constituency results to ensure regional representation. The other MPs are then elected through a proportional balancing, to ensure that the numbers of elected MPs for the various parties accurately represent the votes of the electorate. The Swedish Constitution 1 ch. 4 section says that the Riksdag is responsible for taxation and making laws, and 1 ch. Six sections says that the government is held responsible to the Riksdag. This means that Sweden has parliamentarism in a constitutional monarchy, ensuring that the government is responsible to the people's representatives. A minimum of 4% of the national vote is required for a party to enter the Riksdag, alternatively 12% or more within a constituency. Vote secrecy and party-specific ballots Election officials are responsible for party-specific ballot papers being present in the voting places for parties that have obtained more than 1% of the votes in the previous parliamentary election. If there is no access to the wanted party-specific ballot paper, a voter may cast a vote by writing in the party name of choice on a blank ballot paper. The voter generally chooses a party-specific ballot in the open, and only then marks the ballot they chose in the voting booth. The US Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights sent an election expert team of two members to the 2018 general election to examine and assess this system, including in relation to questions of the secrecy of the ballot. The observers are to issue a report eight weeks after the election was held. Michael Astrup Jensen, a Liberal Party member of the Danish Parliament, observed the Swedish election in Malmo. He stated that, having observed many elections, including some in Russia and Eastern Europe, he had never seen one nearly as undemocratic as in Sweden, and that the Swedish process was far from what would be allowed even in Eastern European countries. He considered that one problem was the presence of party soldiers standing outside the door of the election room, pressing the voters and trying to give them the ballots of their party. There is a bill under consideration by the Riksdag to strengthen ballot secrecy, but Jensen stated that it would not get rid of the party soldiers. Jensen is the chairman of the Danish delegation to the Council of Europe, and he promised to raise the issue there. The neo-Nazi organization Nordic Resistance Movement was reported shouting slogans and filming voters in several election rooms. There were reports of missing party-specific ballots in some voting districts during the early voting phase. On the election day, the Swedish public broadcaster Sveriges Television reported that the ballots of the Sweden Democrats were missing for two hours in one Gothenburg district. Analysis Numerous media sources noted the gains made by the Sweden Democrats, tying those gains to the simultaneous rise of right-wing populist parties across Europe. However, it was noted that the party did not grow as much as some polls had predicted. While the Social Democrats performed better than expected, the party still saw its worst results since 1908, according to The Guardian. The growth of the SD upended perhaps Western Europe's most stable political order, and other commentators made similar statements. According to Emily Schalweis of Foreign Policy, the SD won an ideological victory, 
as it effectively set the terms for debate and forced its rivals to adopt immigration policies similar to its own, and other reporters made similar observations. The election did not result in a clear victory for any political faction. The Sweden Democrats performed particularly well in Skåne County, having the highest number of voters in 21 out of the county's 33 municipalities. SVT reported that at least 22 seats in 17 city councils would be empty as the Sweden Democrats won more seats than the number of candidates it had. The party received its first mayor, in Horby municipality. Despite the Social Democrats' worst result nationwide in decades, they overtook the moderates in the latter's traditional stronghold of Stockholm City. Additionally, the Social Democrats and the left party saw an increase in the number of votes cast in that constituency while the moderates lost votes. Consequently, the Red-Green bloc also overtook the alliance in the constituency. Government Formation The election resulted in a hung parliament, with the Red-Green and centre-right coalitions each holding about 40% of the seats, and the Sweden Democrats holding the remainder. Prime Minister Stefan Löfven stated that he would not step down, though moderate party leader Rolf Christensen called on him to do just that. Before and immediately after the election, all the other parties ruled out a coalition with the Sweden Democrats. The Social Democrats stated they wanted to continue working with the Greens in their coalition, and they favoured a SDMPCL coalition supported by the left party, to avoid working with their main opponents the moderates and the Sweden Democrats. The moderates and the liberals both wanted to form a MCKDL government. During election debates the Sweden Democrats had stated they were willing to support only an alliance government in exchange for concessions, and they have said that they wanted to work with the alliance to preclude the possibility of another red-green government. On the other hand, Aaron Netzler, leader of the left party said his party is interested in participating only in a red-green government. On 12 September, Alliance members invited the Social Democrats to discuss the possibility of forming an Alliance government that would rely on support from the Social Democrats. Prime Minister Stefan Löfven lost the motion of no confidence against him and his cabinet on 25 September 2018, with 142 members of Parliament voting to retain Löfven's cabinet and 204 voting against. Löfven stated in a subsequent press conference that he would not step down as Social Democratic Party leader and that he was willing to partake in talks regarding the formation of a new government, but insisted that it was ultimately up to the Speaker of the Riksdag. Löfven also stated that he found it completely unbelievable that the Alliance could ever form a government if they keep their promise of not cooperating with the Sweden Democrats. Party negotiations for forming a new government commenced on 27 September, and on 2 October the Speaker of the House, Andreas Norlin, announced that he had tasked moderate party leader Rolf Christensen with forming a government. On 14 October, Rolf Christensen held a press conference, stating that he had notified the Speaker of the Riksdag that he is giving up his attempt at forming a government. Christensen maintained that he still has the intention of becoming Prime Minister, and leading a government consisting of the entire alliance, solely the moderates or those alliance parties that would be willing to enter into an alliance government led by myself. He informed the Speaker of the Riksdag that, there is currently no basis for any of these options at this time. The reason for the failure was that the alliance had fewer seats than the Red Greens, so the Sweden Democrats must support government propositions or they would fail and such need for Sweden Democrat support was not tolerated by the centre and Liberal parties. They proposed a government including the Social Democrats, which the moderates ruled out. Stefan Löfven was tasked with forming a government on 15 October 2018, giving him two weeks to construct a stable government coalition. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to